Today on The Hookup, we're gonna take a look at one of the most common smart devices in my house, Shelly Relays. I'm gonna help you decide which of these four locally controlled Shelly Relays is right for you. I'll show you how to wire them and I'll give you some tips and tricks for setting them up. In my opinion, the biggest problem with Shelly devices is that they all look really similar, even though they definitely have different applications. A new automator could be easily overwhelmed by all these different devices and end up with the wrong one or just decide to skip Shelly altogether, which I think would be a shame because Shelly has done so much right. This video isn't sponsored by Shelly, but it is sponsored by HolidayCoro.com. HolidayCoro manufactures and sells everything that you need to get started with the holiday light show hobby. Whether you want to start out with a ready-to-run controller package or dive in headfirst and start building your own props, Holiday Coro has you covered. As expected, prices are lower and technical support is more available during non-peak season, so now is the right time to buy for next year. Check out everything that you need to have the best show on the block using the link in the description. When I first reviewed the Shelly One in August of 2018, one of the main selling points was how easy it was to add custom firmware like Tasmoda. But in 2019, I stopped bothering with Tasmoda on my Shelly devices because the factory firmware can function completely locally and it includes protocols like MQTT, CoAP, and REST. Now in 2021, the official Shelly Home Assistant integration literally discovers your Shelly devices for you and adds all the available sensors and controls automatically. And don't forget, we're talking about local control here. So feel free to disable the Shelly cloud or even block your Shelly devices from the internet because they don't need it. The current Shelly lineup contains about 30 different devices. Today, we're specifically gonna look at relays. Relays are devices that turn power to a circuit either completely on or completely off. What makes these Shelly devices different from other smart switches is the fact that you're still gonna use your existing light switches to control them. Meaning if you have unique or antique switches, you won't need to replace them with tacky looking smart switches so you can upgrade the functionality of your home without destroying the character. So which of these four Shelly relays is right for you? The first thing you need to know is whether your switch location contains a neutral wire. Some old houses in specific countries put the neutral wire at the load, such as at a ceiling light, and they only run the hot wires to the switch. If you look behind your switch and there are only two wires, you don't have a neutral, and the Shelly 1L is your only option for a relay. The Shelly 1L has the lowest maximum load of any of the Shelly relays at just 4.1 amps continuous, which in a 110 volt circuit is 450 watts and in a 220 volt circuit is 900 watts. The Shelly 1L does have thermal protection on it, so it can safely shut off the relay if the load is too high, but you still shouldn't try to put more than a 4 amp continuous load on it. The Shelly 1L works by using magic, or what's sometimes called electromagnetic induction which requires a minimum load of 20 watts in order to have enough electricity running through the circuit to power the Wi-Fi and the relay. If you don't have a 20 watt load, you can add this device called the Shelly Bypass in parallel to add load to your circuit. The most common way to wire your Shelly 1L looks like this, with your hot wire source attached to the L terminal and your hot wire load attached to O. Your switch then gets wired to S1 and SX. If you have two switches, you can wire them to S2 and SX, but that one isn't necessary. Like I said, if you have a 20 watt load, you don't need to use the bypass at all, but if you do need it, it gets installed at your load in parallel like this. You can also install the Shelly 1L with a neutral, but you shouldn't because there's much better options for that. If you do have a neutral wire at your switch, your next question should be how many circuits do you want to control and how many amps will run through those circuits. If you have two switches and each circuit is under 10 amps, then you probably want to use Shelly's flagship product, the Shelly 2.5 which is a UL listed device that can be used to control two separate circuits up to 10 amps. The Shelly 2.5 has two switch inputs, two relay inputs, power monitoring, and overheating protection. The most common wiring configuration of the Shelly 2.5 looks like this with your hot wire source attached to the L terminal and your hot wire loads attached to O1 and O2. Your switches will be connected to your hot wire source on one pole and the SW1 and SW2 switches on the Shelly 2.5. Last year, N terminal connects to your neutral wire. The second L terminal is technically there if you're gonna max out the load on both circuits, but it typically isn't needed since the two L terminals are just connected internally. 10 amps is quite a lot of load per circuit, and like the Shelly 1L, the 2.5 has safety mechanisms built to turn off the relay if your power consumption or temperature are too high. But if you're planning on controlling a particularly large load, like maybe a resistive heater, you should use a Shelly 1PM, which can handle 16 amps. The Shelly 1PM has a single 16 amp relay, thermal monitoring, and power monitoring. The Shelly 1PM is Shelly's most heavy duty relay, and on a 220 volt circuit, the Shelly 1PM can handle 3500 watts or 1750 watts on a 110 volt circuit. 
The most common wiring configuration of the Shelly 1PM looks like this with your hot wire source attached to L and your hot wire load attached to O. Your neutral wire will connect to the end terminal and one side of your switch should be attached to the hot wire source while the other switch goes to the SW terminal. There are two L terminals on the Shelly 1PM, but like the Shelly 2.5, you only need to connect both of them if you intend to max out that 16 amp rating. And last, that leaves us with my favorite Shelly device, the Shelly 1. Shelly 1 doesn't have thermal monitoring like the 1L, PM, and 2.5, and it doesn't have power monitoring either. But there are a few things about the Shelly 1 that make it my go-to for most small projects. First, all the Shelly relays that we've looked at so far output whatever source voltage they're being powered with directly to the relay output. Meaning if you power it with 110 volts, then 110 volts is going to come out of the O terminal when it gets switched on. But on the Shelly 1, the relay is isolated and it has what's called dry contacts. This means that when you switch on the relay, it will connect the I terminal to the O terminal, but no current passes through that circuit unless it's supplied on the I terminal. Second, every relay that we've looked at can be powered using 110 to 230 volts AC, and the Shelly 1, 2.5, and PM can also be powered with 24 to 60 volts DC. But the Shelly 1 can also be directly powered using 12 volts DC. The extra jumper on the Shelly 1 bypasses the voltage regulation circuit to supply the electronics with 12 volts directly. This is super useful since a lot of projects utilize 12 volts for things like LEDs, locks, and sensors. And this allows you to have a single power source. It also means that you can feel free to use the SW terminal and the other GPIO pins on the Shelly for whatever you want when powered with 12 volts because unlike when powering them for mains, these will be referenced to ground and are safe to use. You shouldn't attempt to use the SW or GPIO pins on any other Shelly device for low voltage applications because they are referenced to mains voltage and not ground. Having a dry contact relay does increase the number of wires that you need, so it makes sense why Shelly omitted it on their other relays, but it's super useful in low voltage projects. And like I said, I almost always use my Shelly ones in DC mode, which looks like this, with the positive DC source connected to the N terminal where it says plus, and the negative or ground connected to L where it says minus. You can connect whatever you want to the dry contacts of the relay. In DC mode, the SW input can be used by connecting one side of your switch to a ground and the other side to the SW terminal. If you're using 24 to 60 volts DC, you should leave the jumper in the factory position, but if you want to use 12 volts, you need to switch the jumper from regulated to unregulated. Unfortunately, this means that your Shelly isn't protected from user error anymore, and if you supply it with over 12 volts or you mix up the positive and negative wires, your Shelly is going to let out its magic smoke and will never work again, so pay attention before plugging it in. So, to summarize, no neutral and under 4 amp load, you need the Shelly 1L. Standard switch applications under 10 amps load, Shelly 2.5. High current applications, Shelly 1PM. And dry contact or 12 volt DC applications, Shelly 1. There's also one more specialty application of the Shelly 2.5 where you can hook it directly to your roller shutters and it will use the O1 and O2 terminals to run the shutter motors in either forward or reverse. If you intend to use the Shelly 2.5 as a roller shutter control, it's also important to set it up that way in the web interface. So next, let's talk about getting your Shelly devices connected to your network. My recommended method is to power up your Shelly and look for the Wi-Fi SSID with Shelly in the name. Connect to that hotspot and then open a browser to 192.168.33.1, which will bring you to the Shelly web console. From this web page, you can switch your Shelly on and off and change all of its settings. So first, let's get the Shelly connected to your Wi-Fi. Go to Internet and Security, and then Wi-Fi Mode Client. Put in your SSID and password, and then hit Save. Your Shelly will then reboot and join your network. You can access it in a few different ways. My preferred method is to log into my router and find the IP address of my new Shelly, and then navigate straight to that. I could also find this using an app like Fing. After you're connected, the next thing to do is get your Shelly firmware updated. Having the latest firmware is going to solve 99% of the issues that you might have with your Shelly. Connecting to the Shelly Cloud allows you to control your Shelly devices via Amazon Echo and Google Home using the Shelly skill, and it can also give you remote access to your Shelly devices without needing to set up port forwarding or a VPN. But if, like me, you prefer to use local control only, you can disconnect your Shelly from the Shelly Cloud, and this is the point where there stops being one best setup, and where your setup will heavily depend on what you're using your Shelly for. For local control, the Shelly has three options, REST, MQTT and CoAP, which Shelly calls CoIoT. REST is essentially using HTTP commands to control the Shelly and gather information from it. But the problem with REST is that it uses polling. In other words, a hub like Home Assistant needs to constantly ask the Shelly if anything's changed since the last time that they talked. MQTT and CoIoT are push protocols, meaning that the Shelly will immediately let your hub know when something gets changed. 
MQTT is a more efficient protocol using less network resources, but because it uses a single server for communication, that server needs to be set up properly in order for the device to work. But since CoIoT uses multicast, it doesn't really care who's listening. It just sends out messages on your local network for anyone to listen for. As you can imagine, from a security standpoint, this means that you wouldn't want to use CoIoT on a public network, but on a private network, it's great because it requires no setup and it allows for new devices to be discovered automatically. Which is why when you connect your Shelly to your network, Home Assistant will automatically discover it and give you a notification to set it up. If for some reason that doesn't happen, you can add it to Home Assistant manually by using the Shelly integration along with that device's IP address. A quick note about this, if CoIoT isn't working properly, then Home Assistant falls back to the REST protocol. If you control your light manually, you should see it immediately update in Home Assistant. If there's a lag, that means that CoIoT isn't working, which is most likely because one of your specific network settings. For me, I needed to disable IGMP snooping on my Unify network for CoIoT to work properly. There are tons of other small settings that you can tweak in this menu, but the last thing that I'm going to cover are the switch types. I mentioned earlier that a major selling point of the Shelly Relays is the ability to add smart functionality to a completely normal looking switch. The inevitable trade-off of this is that sometimes the switch state won't match the state of the lights. If you have a lot of two or three-way switches in your house, then you're probably already used to this. But for some people, a switch in the up position means that that light should be on, period, and anything else is unacceptable. The good news is that whatever your opinion on the situation, Shelly has a switch option for you. Using the button type menu, you can choose momentary for use if your switch is actually a button, toggle, which will always sync the state of the switch and the light when operating it manually. In other words, you can still turn it on and off from the app, but if you turn the light on and the switch is in the off position, then you would first need to toggle the switch up into the on position and then down into the off position in order to turn it back off. There's also edge switch, which would be most like a two or three way configuration where the state of the light will change any time the switch is toggled. This means that sometimes you'll end up turning the light on by flipping the switch down, but the state of the light will always change with every switch movement. The last switch type is called an activation switch that turns on for a specific amount of time and then turns itself back off. Usually this isn't used for lights, but I could see it being effective for something like a bathroom fan. Wrapping it up, you can probably see why Shelly devices have gained so much popularity. They've built a product line that can satisfy basically every use case that you can imagine. Whether your sticking point is UL certification, no neutral, high current, low price, local control, or low voltage, or maybe you just want to use your existing light switches. The Shelly is the best option out there and I'll continue to use them in my projects for the foreseeable future. I hope this video helped you figure out which Shelly is right for you, but if you have additional questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.